Yeah, welcome back to DXB Today, where we're having ourselves a little bit of an artificial intelligence special after the Dubai Assembly for Generative AI last week. We're continuing that momentum with a discussion down here in studio. Um, now we want to turn our attention to the legal, the ethical side uh, of artificial intelligence. And to do that, uh, joined in studio by the legal director of G42, Abu Dhabi-based uh, tech implementer who really is uh, looking towards the future. Donia French joins us here live in studio. Donia, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, and this is, I think, a really important element of the discussion about AI. It wasn't that long ago that hundreds of tech entrepreneurs, some of the biggest uh, founders of some of the biggest companies, wrote that, uh, signed that open letter just to go, yeah, artificial intelligence is great, but let's just pace ourselves, if we can, in terms of the rate of progress as well. Is there a need uh, is there for, for, for the pause to caution? If, not stopping artificial intelligence, it's here to stay, but just approach with caution. Yeah, for sure. I mean, AI is definitely here to stay. And as you mentioned, it, it's rapidly evolving, right? It's becoming increasingly sophisticated, as we've seen with the release of, you know, ChatGPT and other generative AI applications. So we can already see the power that AI can potentially have in the future. But, you know, as with all kind of technological innovations, they can have unintended consequences. And so we've even seen it with social media, actually, you know, who could have imagined, you know, for example, the impact on mental health mm. at the time. And so with AI at the current stage, we have an opportunity now to start thinking about how can we regulate it? How can we kind of safeguard, you know, human rights, human safety? There are so many concerns that we could be, you know, looking at through the law. Mm. Interesting. So AI, hot topic. So I come from the banking sector myself, you know, and it's very much regulated. So from an information security perspective, we're not allowed to use it yet, you know. Yeah. So when do you think it's going to start to trickle down into the corporates and into people's jobs and the use of it becoming, you know, side by side with humans? So the trickling down of the law, you mean, into the corporate? Yeah, the do's and don'ts of how to use yeah. AI. So I think right now it's going to take time for laws to come into force. The main one that's kind of currently in the spotlight is the EU AI Act. And that's due to be published later this year. And we're expecting kind of a, a two year period for organisations to be able to start complying with it. Of course, that will primarily apply to EU organisations or organisations that are kind of deploying AI in the EU, EU. So it won't necessarily apply to organisations, for example, here in the UAE. Mm. But we have already seen the DIFC um, implement amendments to its data protection regulations, which are quite interesting. It just goes to show you know, how innovative they're being. They've introduced like a new section that deals with kind of more of the ethical concerns around AI. And whereas the EU AI Act is taking a risk-based approach, so it's looking to almost regulate the algorithms, the machines themselves, and saying if a machine is really high risk and it's unacceptable, then it should be banned. DIFC has taken a slightly different approach in that it's trying to regulate kind of the development and the deployment of AI, which is quite an interesting angle. So I think what's really important for regulation is, is ultimately we'll need to have kind of global coordination to ensure that it's consistent because if you have multinational organizations, it's going to be very difficult for them to comply with the law Absolutely. if every jurisdiction has a kind of a different approach. Um, right now, with the law kind of still not fully enforced, um, you know, ac across international borders. I think what organisations can try to look to do is implement ethical guidelines. Yeah. The law really is there to impose a kind of a minimum standard. Um, and with AI kind of advancing at a rapid rate, naturally the law is not going to necessarily be able Catch to keep up. up. Yeah. It, I mean, it will have to try to adapt. But in the meantime, the ethical guidelines can try to fill in the gaps. Mm. Yeah. So following up on that, what do you think are the best practices that entrepreneurs and startups should do when it comes to compliance and regulations and what are the red flags they should avoid? Yeah, it's an interesting question because everyone is, is kind of really focused on, you know, the regulation of AI itself, but sometimes they forget we do have existing laws and regulations that we can look to. And one of the biggest ones is the GDPR. Yeah. Um, and, you know, other jurisdictions have implemented laws that are based on that. That is seen as international best practice. So, for example, if you're dealing with loads of data and as, you know, for example, LLMs, they're processing vast amounts of data right now. What can you do to ensure that data isn't released, particularly if it's sensitive? How can we, you know, ensure that 
people's kind of confidential information is protected. Yeah. So, you know, there are things in the GDPR that allow you to protect people's data. So I would say that as a base, look to the existing regs and laws. And, you know, just I kind of, I think, approach with some common sense. And as I said, try to implement some internal gu guidelines around what you're doing. So if you're developing an AI tool, think of some of the ethical principles like bias. How can you mitigate that? One of the things you can do is, you know, evaluate your training data set. You can monitor review results on an ongoing basis to see if you can identify bias. Mm. Um, the other one is hiring diverse teams because if anyone's going to spot, you know, bias, it's going to be someone from a kind of a similar kind of minority yeah. background. So there are many things that you can be done, and there's so much information online, so many resources to help, you know, startups in particular. Dunya, the question I'm about to ask is a silly one, or it might be a silly one. Have there conversations been had with uh, people like you who work in this industry about what happens if our AI gains consciousness, if they would have rights and they de that need protecting? Is that a conversation that has happened? Because you have to imagine when it comes to this. It's an interesting question. I mean, the, the concept of AI having rights, it, it's kind of already been touched upon in the context of IP law. So for example, if you know a machine or a robot has created an invention, should they be capable of, you know, uh, basically affording copyright protection to that invention um, or if you know an AI machine has generated a new piece of artwork should, should, should that have copyright protection and you know there's actually been some cases in the US that have said no if there's been no human intervention or oversight then no they cannot have you know copyright or patent um, protection so we're already seeing these questions come up um, I think so they create the art they sell it for a billion dollars yeah. Who keeps the money? The AI <laughs> well, that's, does. That's, that's the other question, right? I mean, but also, so questions like around accountability, but also liability. If something goes wrong, who's liable? Is it yeah. the machine? Is it the, the user who's like put in the command? Um, is it the developer? So all of these questions, you know, yeah, still I guess remain unanswered. It's a silly question after all. <laughs> Not <laughs> at all. <laughs> Dunya Fredge, thank you so much for joining us on DXB today. Thank you very much. Now, on today's Spotlight, we want to talk about a brand that's disrupting the traditional way that we rent cars for better. Here's our interview with Nicholas Watson, CEO of UDrive. My name is Nick Watson. I am the CEO and co-founder of UDrive, which is the largest car sharing company here in the Middle East. We help mainly middle to lower income individuals have access to mobility from one minute to one meter uh, from anywhere they are in the market to wherever they want to go in the market. Um, we don't ask for deposits. We don't ask for any other friction that we would get with normal traditional rental cars. One of our major milestones was reaching 1,000 cars, uh, also expanding outside of the UAE into Saudi Arabia, making us a GCC company. Plus, of course, we survived COVID, which was uh, one of the biggest learning experiences I think anybody could have had in our business. We've had our traditional startup uh, challenges, which include hiring the right people, raising funding to grow the business, working with entities in the country where we are operating, finding suppliers that are very supportive to our business model, and of course, building a customer base that becomes very loyal are all part of your traditional startup and scale-up uh, challenges you would have. Our plan is to be everywhere and anywhere. That's our slogan. Uh, the reality is mobility is a human right. Uh, everybody should have access to a vehicle, whether they are driving it themselves or it's driving them, which is the future. Uh, the reality is that there's a lot of mobility in the market, both here in the UAE and Saudi Arabia and the other GCC countries. So our vision is to be everywhere and available to anyone. Dubai is a melting pot. You have so many nationalities, so many different people who live, work, uh, they live together, they work together. There's uh, different ethnicities, there's income, different income amounts that they're making every month, disposable income, non-disposable income. I think it's a great place to build a business where your challenges are not having access to customers, but mainly building a product that the customers truly want. Welcome back to the studio. Now, Nicholas Watson there taking us through all the insightful things that you drive are doing. Now, it's time for the Daily Roundup. 
Faris, what's the buzz in town? I'll tell you what the buzz in town is, something very exciting. Digital Dubai has announced the launch of Dubai Now. It's an AI platform in partnership with the Dubai Center for Artificial Intelligence. So what it does is it allows users to easily and seamlessly access services and information about the city of Dubai across various different sectors. The platform is currently available on the official website of the city of Dubai. That's dubai.ae and the Dubai Now app. So, Reem, I heard AI, I heard Dubai app. It's a cool platform. How does, do you know how it works? Well, it's, it's a set of huge databases of different services. So think of a centralized platform where you can ask any question and it gives you the answer right on spot. For example, uh, what is the closest clinic that I can get an insurance that, that works with a certain insurance and so on. So it's basically trained on large data sets uh, incorporated from different government services to provide you with the seamless experience that you can have at the platform. Amazing, so it's sort of like talking to an agent, talking to someone uh, exactly. for an, an inquiry and they can agent. check everything and give you the answer you need. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Is it Dubai's version to Alexa or Siri? <laughs> it's not that far <laughs> off. I just, what I find extraordinary about this is that I thought a lot of the public services were pretty seamless already. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you look at the efficiency of the UAE app, you look at the efficiency of the Dubai app, as it stands, etc. This just shouts to me of the, 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 the you know, not resting in your laurels, yeah. con, 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 continually moving forward. Yeah, exactly. You put it so succinctly a little bit earlier on, you think of the buzzwords from last year, we're talking about Metaverse, we're talking about 3.0, we're talking about uh, all the others that were coming, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, let's not just rest on that, let's just yeah take the step already before others. And that's what I think is driving this idea of this place becoming a sort of hub for artificial intelligence talent. A lot of people want you to come here and be part of that. Exactly. So once you get too comfortable, then it's quite dangerous. That's why you should always be up to date with the advancement that happens. But the one thing I wanted to just mention here, and I was quite conscious of it when we've been having a lot of these chats, that I wonder if we're taking the fun out of AI a bit because we're talking about the sort of risks, don't we? We talk about does everyone really is ev is everyone educated enough to understand artificial artificial intelligence, the potential they're in, mm. and we've got to remember the fun side to it as well. Artificial intelligence can be a lot of fun, correct? Well, metaverse, for instance, simulations that we see, that's the fun part. So. There's a lot of fun when it comes to AI, when it comes to even creating content, music, videos, and that's all done by AI automation. So we should always remember that, you know, there is the good and there is the bad and there's the fun part that we should always uh, bring into picture before just being scared of the unknown. Yeah. When you said fun in AI, the first thing I thought of uh, was AI generated pictures of Danny DeVito running in the woods, because I have seen those. <laughs> so there, there is a lot of fun that can be had. It's only off the back of you saying this is an AI party, and we need a bit of fun at the party, don't we? You know, in our AI party today. In fact, let's get this party started for the AI party today on DXP Today. Let's see what's still to come. We learned to make our own app using AI, and we learned to apply for jobs using AI. That's all still to come right here on DXB Today. Do not go anywhere.